to give these three women nightmares. Indisputably, these are clear threats to commit or incite political violence. Not from years ago, but just months ago. Imagine the pain that these members' families must be experiencing when they see pictures like this one. Imagine what our children think, their children, or when they know their loved ones are walking the halls of Congress and may encounter harassment as it happened to Representative Bush. So I asked my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, when they take this vote, Imagine your faces on this poster. Imagine it's a Democrat with the 8 or 15. Imagine what your response would be and would you think that that person ought to be held accountable? But when acquiescence to the suggestion of violence or any kind is allowed to go unchecked, it is a cancer that meet metastasizes on the body politic of our nation, as we saw just a few days ago on the 6th of January. A cancer. That's how Senate Republican Leader McConnell described it. He said, loony lies and conspiracy theories are a cancer for the Republican Party and our country. McConnell, should we stand silent? in the face of that kind of activity? He continued, somebody who suggests that perhaps no airplane hit the Pentagon on 9-11, that horrifying school shootings were pre-staged, and that the Clintons crashed JFK Jr.'s airplane is not living in reality. It's not me talking. It's not a Democrat talking. It's Senator McConnell. This has nothing to do with the challenges facing American families or the robust debates on substance can strengthen our parties. My colleagues across the aisle have an opportunity today to reclaim their party from the dangerous cancer of QAnon and violent conspiracy theories that promote and have demonstrably resulted in sedition and insurrection. Senator Romney, you remember Senator Romney? He was candidate for president of the United States on the Republican ticket nominated in the Republican convention. He said of his party this week, I think we should have nothing to do with Marjorie Taylor Greene and think we should repudiate the things she said and move away from her. Our big tent is not large enough to both accommodate conservatives and kooks. Not my word, his words. A Republican member of the United States Senate. Now he's not a big buddy of Trump's. So apparently he didn't have to do what Trump suggested he do. And Senator Ernst, conservative woman from Iowa, she doesn't represent the party. I don't want her to be the face of our party. I think this is a great time for us to really talk about what we want to see in the upcoming years and continue to build. We don't need people that are promoting violence or anything like that. That's a Republican conservative senator. Republican Senator and former Governor of Florida, Rick Scott said, a conservative Republican Senator. That's not what the Republican Party stands for. Let me suggest to you, if it's not, vote with us. Vote with the House, not, not Democrats. Vote with the House of Representatives. Vote with good order and peace. Furthermore, Senator Young of Indiana said, there ought to be no place in the Republican Party for the kind of views espoused by Representative Green. That's what McCarthy said when you kicked King off all of his committees. This is not something you haven't done. However, sadly, you left it to us to do your job. Representative Cole called her statements extraordinarily disturbing. He said that yesterday, it's an old quote. And Senator Thune asked his fellow Republicans in the House, do they want to be the party of limited government? I think the answer to that is yes. Or do they want to be the party of conspiracy theories in QAnon? Furthermore, Senator Young of Indiana said, there ought to be no place in the Republican Party for the kind of views espoused by Representative Green. 
That's what your Republican colleagues have said. This is not partisan. This is about principle. And you can shake your head as much as you want. This is not about party. It's about whether or not you will vote for decency and truth. Not being members' worst nightmare. I hope we can do it together. All of us embracing our humanity and our basic adherence to the Constitution. Edmund Burke, who I'd quoted earlier, said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Let us not do nothing. I often share another passage spoken so long ago by Edmund Burke when a new member arrives to serve in the House. It concerns the duty of a representative has to his or her constituents. His conclusion on that matter is that we owe them our unbiased opinion, mature judgment, and enlightened sense of conscience. What does your conscience tell you to do in light of this kind of assertion? Nothing? Burke told his own constituents that these virtues a representative does not derive from your pleasure, no, nor from the law and the Constitution. They are trust from providence for the abuse of which you are deeply answerable. Your representative owes you not his industry only, but his judgment, and he betrays it instead of serving you if he sacrifices it to your opinion. This is not about polling. This is not about your base. This is about your conscience and your moral judgment. In other words, each of us ought to look inside our hearts to the answer we know is right and is best for the House and for our country. If the Republican Party, for less toxic language, took committee assignments away from Steve King, should they do less in this instance? There is no doubt that if somebody came to the Congress and had said before they came to Congress, I am for violent revolution against the government of the United States of America. That your party would say, that's not somebody we want to be associated with. That's not what she said. I do not assert that. But should we do less than you did for Steve King? For far less toxic language. Let us not do nothing. Mr. Speaker. Let us do the right thing. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen, uh, yields back the balance of his time. Gentleman from Florida, resource. Gentleman.